needed to figure out the Rauschenberg effect, and Carol needed to climb a mountain. So we decided to take a drive, a long drive. Carol was going to climb that mountain on her bicycle. And I was going to escape this figure divinery and try to figure out this Rauschenberg effect that I've had in my head for a long time. So we decided to go to the little village of Saint-Jean-de-Morian in Savoie. From there, Carol will climb to the summit of the Col de la Croix de Fer on her bicycle. Okay. And I, I think I... I think I'm just going to listen to the Alps. Right. Rauschenberg effect? means nothing. Nine kilometers to the Col du Moya. <coughs> and <coughs> I came up this mountain. I'm on my way up this mountain to the Col du Moya. And I was thinking more about the Rauschenberg effect. How both well, it was Rauschenberg and Johns, uh, the two of them, that kind of came in at the same time as Pop when, when, when everything was, was about the banality, the, 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 the meaninglessness, if you will, of, of consumerism, uh, everything that we, you know, we, uh, our packaging became more important, uh, actually, than, than what was inside. And that's what Warhol was depicting in the packaging. And, the, the banality of things, and, and, and I remember Rauschenberg, uh, both Rauschenberg and Johns, as a matter of fact, discussing that the art didn't mean anything at all. Uh, you know, they, uh, Rauschenberg, for example, created these elaborate uh, compositions, and. They, they lent themselves, uh, in many ways, to this varied interpretation. And yet, he insisted, and, and so did Johns, that it, the art meant nothing. It was, there was no meaning. He was just accumulating images that he found interesting. And what does that really mean? Does it mean that... that it was purely a decoration. Uh, it was just something that he did. It had no meaning. And yet, those pieces, uh, John's as well, are trading in the multiple millions today. Uh, I mean, we're talking, what, uh, 10, 20 million dollars uh, or more. So, what, what about an artist today who says, my art means nothing. There's no meaning. It, it, Therefore, I guess, it's purely decorative. And if that's the case, that moves to the IKEA effect, what I call the IKEA effect, which is now it's just decoration. So, you know, now you're really, you're shopping for something that looks pretty, that goes with your couch, uh, and, and the color you decided to paint your the walls of your living room. Uh, now, how do you determine price? So you go to Ikea, you buy something nice, and it's, you know, maybe fifty, sixty dollars a uh, hundred euros, perhaps. Um, whereas uh, you buy an original Bob Rauschenberg, and it's going to cost you twenty million dollars. And we'll get to that whole thing a little bit later. Uh, then, we move to the Walmart effect. We go from the Rauschenberg effect, which, which, which moved everything towards this concept of banality, even though people struggled and still do today to try to find some sort of meaning, some sort of interpretation in the actual images that he used, which I find very interesting.
Uh, perhaps his whole uh, concept that it means nothing was just a smokescreen uh, to to excite the public, to, to to encourage them, to almost force them to find a meaning. Quite clever, if that's the case. Uh, well, we'll continue. Okay, so Rauschenberg says his art has no meaning whatsoever. But I think I need to give you a little perspective on that because there's, there's more to it than that. And both uh, Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns uh, came to prominence at a time just after really abstract expressionism where everything was this heavy depth of meaning, a splatter of paint could signify the, the death of society, the, the, the throes of uh, agony. And by saying their art meant nothing, I can understand why they were making a slightly rebellious statement against that. But at the end, what do we really have? We have a piece of art that sells for millions of dollars and means nothing. Why not just go buy something at IKEA, or if you're really feeling like saving a few dollars, go to Walmart. That's really what I'm wrestling with here. That's the essence of the Rauschenberg effect. Uh, you know, I wonder, is that really what art is all about? Does it become the Walmart effect? Uh, I'm here, in the mountains, uh, next to a little village called Saint-Jean-de-Morient, and I can hear cowbells. Is that art? Yeah, it sure is. It's incredible perched way up there. You can see, uh, maybe, several small little chalets on the very top of the mountain. It's incredible. And I'm talking about art and I'm talking about uh, what I call the Rauschenberg effect, uh, the IKEA effect, uh, the Walmart effect, and, and what is decoration, and what is uh, art, what does it mean, if it means anything at all, and yet actually I'm here following Carol as she climbs this incredible mountain on her bicycle. She's training to do a stage of the Tour de France. It's uh, an amazing thing to me. And I love her very much. And there she goes. Yep, in the mountains it was easy to simplify. The air was clear. Uh, I was watching Carol defy gravity itself on her bicycle. Incredible. And yeah, that means something. You know, what does the art mean? What does anything else mean? I don't know. I don't know. I, I need to think more about this. Well, also, I've been thinking about this whole concept of the art means nothing. We trumpet this idea. The art is absolutely meaningless. And somebody's calling me. I'm in the mountains. And somebody is calling my phone. That means something, and that is very interesting. Uh, in fact, I don't think we'll answer it. Nope. Too late. So, the fact that somebody's calling me in the mountains, that means something. The, art, the artist claims the art means zero. That means something. I talked a little bit about the IKEA effect the, to the Walmart effect from the Rauschenberg effect. 
and then I see, and then I see though the prices of Johns and, and Rauschenberg, for example, the people that said the art means nothing, are astronomical. They're just two artists. It's it's so we're buying their art because now it's an investment, not because it has a signification, not because it even means anything to us other than a sum of money. Oh, here comes somebody. So what is the art about now? It's about money. Uh, the middle class artist, the, the, the guy just, you know, trying to express himself, trying to make art, uh, is struggling. If he's making any money at all, he's working at a factory making shoes, or the soles for shoes, or the laces, or maybe those little eyelets that the laces go in. And where are we going to go with this? Higher up into the mountains. Right, right, right. Keep going, eh? And Carol and I, well, we're almost to the top. And in fact, the higher we go, the purer it seems to be up here, and uh, the less even interesting the Rauschenberg effect is, and let alone the Walmart effect where price is everything and and a few dollars is all that matters. Here it's it's pure, it's art. And the huh. Col de la Croix de Fer, uh, two thousand sixty seven meters. Seems like here everything is tied up or completely untied. There doesn't seem to be much in between. And, and we're at the top. And it's time to go back down. Oh. And that was an incredible climb. Carol made it to the top of La Col de la Croix de Fer a hell of a lot faster than I got to the bottom of the Rauschenberg effect. But then, hey, the descent is always a lot easier. And uh, a hell of a lot faster. Yeah, in the mountains, it was easy to simplify. And the Rauschenberg effect, the IKEA effect, the Walmart effect, you know, none of it was or ever will be as pure as the air up there. I don't really know what it means, but uh, I'm enjoying a picnic in the mountains. <laughs>